Hello to everybody new to um, Dremel carving or wood carving or normal subscribers to the channel. I think it's good uh, once a year to get back to the basics and talk about tools and um, different rotary tools, different flex shafts and different um, foot pedals and stuff like that. So here's a Dremel 4000. This is my go-to um, rotary tool. Um, this isn't the one I use. This one's dead. I killed logs. You can see the little things for the brushes are missing. Well, that one's still there. But, um, yeah, this one's toast. So, But it's good to keep your old ones because you can get parts out of this for your, for other ones that you break. If you break them, if you're hard on them as you are, as I am. Um, this is the Dremel 44000. I'm not too sure how fast it spins. I'm sorry, I should have done my research, but uh, 5,000 to 35,000 RPMs, all right? So this is my normal go-to one. This is the one I got hanging up and I'm carving with right now. But I'm not, um, just because it says it's Dremel does not mean it's the best. You know, these Dremels are made in Mexico, I believe, and, well, in my opinion, they don't last. The price that you pay for them, they don't last as long as they should, even if you um I know people that aren't heavy carvers and the Dremels don't last too long. So this is what I want to show other rotary tools too. So I like the Dremel 4000 personally because I use the Dremel flex shaft. Okay. This is like carving with a pen. You got, it's, it's better, it's better to have the flex shaft and carve like this with like a pen or a little pencil than to have to hold this whole thing and carve like this. Now, don't get me wrong. When I'm chainsaw carving, I don't use the flex shaft. Because when you when you have the flex shaft hooked up to the Dremel, there's um what would the proper word be um it's it's not as it's just simple let's just see believe it's simple like this it's not as strong in here because there's a flex shaft in here than it is in here when I when I got it in the the, the burr the bit in the Dremel itself with no flex shaft I can push a lot hard, harder and carve a lot faster okay so. I like the Dremel 4000 because it's a perf perfect fine balance for me with the flex shaft. Um, when I run the, I, I carve super fast and heavy. I know it's not good if I, if I carved a lot slower and not so heavy, I'd probably be a much better carver. Okay. And I've never claimed to be a good carver. But the Dremel 4000 is a perfect balance for me for the Dremel flex shaft because I don't break flex, the inner flex shafts on these anymore. All right. When I use the Dremel 4300, I, I get, I'm cranking some music. I'm curving away. Um, it has more power than this, and that's when I start breaking more flex shafts again. But I use, do use the Dremel 4300 for when I'm chainsaw curving with no flex shaft. All right, so this is my go-to Dremel. Um, here's a Dremel 3000. This one spins at, um, let's see here. This one spits at, spins at um, 5,000 to does that say 35,000 too? I don't know about that, but um, yeah, so this is the Dremel 3000. This is a great um, Dremel for the very beginning carvers too. Any rotary tool is good. I got one here that's I think is completely junk, So, but I'll show you that to you in a bit. So here's the Dremels. And I don't think you have to, um, you don't have to buy the Dremel. You don't have to spend the bigger money. What, like what does the Dremel, 40, uh, Dremel 4000 cost now? It's uh, over 100 bucks or something, I think on. Amazon Prime, you can get it for eighty or ninety dollars. Now, this is one I really like. This is the Wen, the Wen Toolkit. This one spins at eight thousand to thirty thousand RPMs. It's one hundred twenty volts, sixty blah blah blah. I don't know. I'm not the stats guy. Just carve Rob's the stats guy. Now, I really like these Wens. I think there's. I think this is the smaller model. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. I think the bigger one is the orangey one, and the smaller one is the blue one. So these ones, um, people, like, what is this? You get this and a flex shaft for, like, $40 or something on Amazon. This is a great carver for the very beginner. The only thing with the ones, when you buy when you buy this wen rotary tool, you get these cheap flex shafts, okay? So these things are really flimsy. Here's the hand piece. There's no button to lock it. You have to, you know, you have to use another burr. They give you a little pin to put in here, a hole to lock your burr up. You put your bit in there and you lock it up. Now, I do suggest if you do not have enough money to buy the Dremel flex shaft or the Apex Forge flex shaft, what I'm going to show in a little while, if you do not have enough money for that, take this 
screw off. So it will come off. Because, you see this? This is your collet. Now, the collets that they give you with these, these are, this is junk. I might as well just throw this away. I think try and get yourself a, a Dremel collet. They're like $7 on Amazon. I think they're like $8 Canadian dollars. I'm in Canada. so. But get yourself a Dremel collet because these collets here, um, the burrs always slide out. Even, even, if you put in, even if you put your burr in here, Okay, you get your burr in there and you put your pin in here and you lock it super tight like it's going to break. This burr will still slide out after time. Sometimes it doesn't, but um, for me, it does. I know Amy Jo was just having a problem with that too. And I suggested to, for her to, um, well, actually she, she had the Dremel flex shaft, but her, her burr kept on sliding out. It's one of those cheap Chinese, um, you, everything these days made in China, but one of these cheap Chinese cutters. It was in her Dremel hand piece. It keep, kept sliding out. And basically, I suggested to her to spend the $8 and just buy yourself a new collet. Just uh, Amazon Dremel 1 8 collets. That's, that's all I run is 1 8 burrs. Anyways, so that's that. So if you don't have enough money to buy the Dremel Flex Shaft, because what is it, like $50 now? $45? If you don't have enough money to buy the Dremel Flex Shaft, just use the one they give you in the kit. It gets hot and it um, the, the rubber on the thing is not very good. Like I'll show you in a second here. This rubber is not very good. It's super flimsy. I'll show you compared to the Dremel. It's um, just way weaker than the Dremel. The Dremel um, flex shaft part doesn't really heat up. So like I said, once again, I know I repeat, just get yourself a better collet for that if you don't have enough money or or if you're just testing the waters with wood carving, you know, you just with power wood carving with the Dremels and rotary tools and stuff like that. If you're just testing the waters and don't want to buy the Dremel flex shaft, like I said, just buy yourself the new collet to put in here. This that you get with the Dremel does not thread onto the wens, I believe. It's been a while since I've used this wen. Yeah, it doesn't thread on there. So you have to use the normal when one and the normal collet inside there, right? Here's your collet, one eighth, and your normal nut. Now, to, and I've used it lots, but it's not recently. So this is kind of like my standby for when I break Dremels and I got no more left. So sometimes, here's your inner flex shaft. Like this is the Dremel flex shaft right here, right? Here's the inner flex shaft. You, when you put it, you have to put this on first so because you're going to have to do it up. When you put this in, sometimes you have to adjust how much you slide it in or out. Do you follow me? Let's open this collet a little bit. Okay, sometimes you need to adjust. Sometimes you need to put it in there more or less, more or less. I usually find less works the best. Because it's got to reach the hand, the flex shaft, the inner flex shaft needs to reach the hand piece. If you do that, lock it up and then tighten this up really good because it's, you don't have the square drive in there. But then you do this up and then your Dremel flex shaft's all hooked up. All right. So, yes, the when the when rotary tool, the orange one does take the Dremel flex shaft. You just cannot use the square drive collet. You have to use the collet that comes, the one eighth collet that comes with the win. Does that make sense to you? So there's a the collet in there. Here's your flex shaft, your Dremel flex shaft. Put your nut on there because you're going to need to tighten it up after. Put that in there. Sometimes you need to adjust, like sometimes a little bit less, a little bit more. Put your nut on, then screw it on, and make sure the inner flex shaft, make sure your handpiece is spinning. If it's not spinning, that means you need to slide it out a bit more from the collet because it's too deep in the collet. It's so deep into the collet now, this inner flex shaft, it's not reaching where it needs to reach in here. So, but if you pull it out more and then tighten it like that, it will reach where it needs to, to hit here and it will spin your, your bit that you use. I always use the cut saw bits too, by the way. Okay, so that's that. So there's the win. I hope it was um hope you could understand my crazy nonsense. We're gonna run this all in one video. So I really love the wins. The wins are good and they're cheap. The next um this one here, 
this is just called a rotary tool. I think it was like $25. It's, um, it's pretty well, I don't like it. I tried to use it at my chainsaw tent, but um, I don't know even what it spins at. Eight to 35,000, and that's absolutely not true. But um, you can hang it. Here's the thing to hang on. Um, I'm not, you, yes, the Dremel flex shaft will hook up to this. Um, but if you're not going to use the Dremel flex shaft and you're just going to use this, 100%, 1,000,000%, switch this call it out to the Dremel call it because your burrs will keep sliding out. That's the, the Apex Forge uh, square drive one. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this one, I'm not even going to talk about. I don't even know what brand it is. It just says Rotary Tool. It's super cheap, and uh, I don't. I just. I don't suggest buying this one. Simple as that. Now another really good one that I that I've liked is this is the Tac Life. Okay, so the Tac Life Rotary Tool. This one is the RTD 36 AC Rotary Tool Tac Life. Now this one's is this filming? Yep, this one's good. I like it. Um, it's got speed control. It's got the hanger thing, so you can hook up your Dremel flex shaft. Here's the, is that the Dremel square drive I got on here? Because, yeah, this is the Dremel square drive, okay? So when you buy a Dremel flex shaft, it will come with this. It will come with a square drive. I don't know if you can, let me stand up, see if you can see that, a square drive. Is that square drive? Yeah, it is. Yep. So this is the one that comes with the Dremel kit when you buy it, the Dremel Flex Shop. It'll be in a little pack, and you'll get one of these fruity little wrenches. Right? So here's the Tac Life. Here's the Dremel Flex Shop. You pull out your, your inner Flex Shop. This is square drive, too, so it'll fit right inside of here. Do it up. Boom. You're carving. That's, that's how easy the Tac Life is. No weird adjustments. All right? So Tac Life 3 I don't know if there's, I think there's two different size tack lights too. Actually, it's been a few years since I've bought a tack life. Maybe I should buy another one just to prove that um, everything still works the same. But I'm pretty sure it does. Tack life, it's a good one too. Um, this other one here too, this is uh, just Car Rob. He's got it. This is the Apex Forge. Um, he was just talking, he just made a video about his actually. This says it spins at 10,000 to 35,000 RPMs. Okay, made in China, obviously. Now, this is a pretty good one, too. Um, I relate, uh, I think just Carve Rob says this relates to his Dremel 3000. So, um, it's a very, very good um, carvable one. And just Carve Rob, yeah, the TAC lights, I believe, still come with these cheap, these cheap um, flex shafts. But I told everybody how they can get a better call out to put in there. So here's the, the tack life one. You just undo this nut here. Actually, uh, tack life sent these um, these to me and just carved Rob. Well, they sent me one, and I said, "Well, you gotta send my friend Rob one too," and they did. So that was nice of them, and they sent us a cordless one too. So just oh, you gotta push a button until I unlock it, or whatever. One of no, here you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 So what's in here? So you just got a round call, round call it in there, but this is square drive. So you don't even need to call it in there if you're going to use the flex shaft. So boom, put that on, put the thing in the thing. And this, the, this one too has a little stopper on it. There's a little, little tag thing there, a little pressure fit, um, O copper o-ring so it just lets you perfect in the perfect amount then you just do it up and you're off to the races but i don't like those um cheap flex shafts so here's i don't did the tack life did this did this one fit the dremel flex shaft so here's the dremel flex shaft in my hand so you just put it in there okay that's right but to use this one and do that. I know this is it's boring and stuff like that, but how else can I uh, explain? You have to use the round collet for the Dremel um, square drive because this 
square drive is bigger than the Dremel one. This is bigger. I guess the talk life end is bigger too. So you put this on like you did the other one. Put it in the round collet. You do it up, and then you do it up. And then, let's see here. I'm going to have to pull this whole flex shaft off to try and get it to line up properly. Lock her up. Screw her on, and there you go. You're off to the races. Okay? So when I spin this, I'll see the... I should see the motor spinning or hearing it. And I do. So that's that. So the Apex Forge is pretty good, too. Um... That's really it for the, uh, I think, I, I like the winds and the tack lifes. It's T-A-C-K, tack life. I like the winds and the tack life. I've used, like, a whole bunch of other knockoff Dremels, too. So that's that. Now, um, foot pedals, okay? I think when you use these ones, these knockoff Dremel ones, you can use a speed control foot pedal, I, I believe. Don't hold me to it. But it's kind of funny, about a year after I started making my um, videos showing different types of foot, foot pedals and speed controls, um, Dremel put something in their Dremel so you can't use a speed control foot pedal. Um, you can use an older Dremel and the speed control foot pedal will work, but not the newer ones, if that makes sense to you. The newer Dremels, you cannot use. All you do, all I do, say if this Tack Life can use a speed control, foot pedal all i do is crank it up to maximum i turn this at maximum and i keep it at maximum then i hook plug this into my foot pedal um i plug plug this into the foot pedal so here's just a, a cheap on off foot switch it's called a foot pedal switch okay 110 120 volts so here's a plug-in this goes to your, your foot pedal this plugs into the foot pedal, right? And then your foot pedal plugs into the wall. Does that make sense? Dremel plugs into the foot pedal, foot pedal plugs into the wall. Now, some people don't have a lot of money to spend $10 on a cheap Amazon foot pedal, and that's fine. I get it. Um, I, I, I don't have a lot of money myself. So you can go to the thrift store and you can get a, old sewing machine foot pedal, all right? This is a foot pedal that I used for many years. I used to have it fastened to a board. This is speed control. Now, all that there's, there's a, uh, two plugins in this. So there was a plugin for your sewing machine light. I just taped that over so I don't use that. And there's a plugin for a motor. So here's your Dremel plugin. You just plug this into there. Then you plug the this, Okay, so this is all connected, you see? Let's get, rid of, let's get rid of this shit. Here's your foot pedal. You got one wire coming off this sewing machine foot pedal. Boom, boom, boom. There's your plug-in. Plug it into the motor part, then keep on going. And then this plugs into the wall, okay? So like I said, some of these knockoff ones do work for speed control. The um, Dremels, the newer Dremels do not because you're crossing they say, because uh, I talk to Dremel, but I emailed them, and they say that you're cross, crossing paths. But if you turn this up at maximum and just leave it at maximum, and you use your speed control foot pedal like this cheap sewing machine one from a thrift store, you're not crossing paths. Well, you, you might be crossing paths, but I don't know. You're just safe to leave this on high and use this for your speed. Is that that? That's that. You know, the best pedals out there, I think, in my opinion, are the Fordhams. So uh, you can spend like a hundred and something dollars on a Fordham one, and they're good, and they're speed controlled too. Now, let's get, let me get sorted here. I'm just trying to run this all live. So here's your three flex shafts. Here's your generic brand one that you're going to get. In most cheap Dremels, like in the Wen and the Tack Lifes, I showed you how to make it better. Um, pull the, take that nut off, pull the collet out, put a Dremel collet in. Now, another thing, too. When I get these flex shafts right out of the box, I pull this inner flex shaft out, all right? Now, there's a spring, and there's like a spring inside here, too. Now, I get a rag. 
and I wipe off all the grease. I don't care what anybody says. Sometimes these things come with too much grease. The grease will get into your handpiece and your handpiece will overheat. All right. Does that make sense? I like these flex shafts with less grease. I, I don't, once I wipe the grease off, I don't put new grease on it. I just leave it. Less grease is better. Um, I haven't broken a flex shaft in a long time. My flex shafts do not overheat. And I carve fast, full throttle, green wiener, 24-7. I just always carve as, when you're using an on-off foot pedal, I just, I click it on and I have my Dremel set at maximum. I'm always running at full speed. I just go harder to the touch or lighter to the touch. All right. So I really suggest this um, Apex Forge. This is the Apex Forge off flex shaft. I don't, I believe the, these, when you buy an Apex Forge rotary tool, um, just Carl Rob was actually wondering on this video, but I don't think they come with these. You might find this a package now because it's been like a year later, but I'm not too sure. The Apex Forge usually comes with this cheap one. But I suggest getting this Apex Forge. Um, one, it's great. Like I just made a video talking about it on a video. This is how you lock it by that button right there. It's push. You the Dremel one, you put your finger on and you wear the pin down. But this one's great because there's you you can have your finger on it and carve and not even affect it. The Dremel, the Dremel one is um it's a flaw. Dremel would probably never admit it. And Dremel knows who carving fusion is. Absolutely they do. Oh yes, they do. And they probably don't like me because I show stuff like this. And I really do not give a shit. Um, I never want to be sponsored by anybody. That's not why I do this. I get free stuff. I got a drill and I got some, actually I got a cordless rotary tool. I got to make a video for because I was going to just get the, the rotary tool and then make the video and give it to a friend of mine. But so the Dremel one, you see, this is your locking pin to undo your nut. So lots of times I'm carving, not even realizing that my fish, my Fingers putting pressure on this pen, and uh, you're just going to screw it up. Uh, big wheels there in the UK. He's put uh, epoxy around his up here, raised it up. So when his fingers on the pen, it can't. When the, his fingers resting here, when you're carving, you, you, it, can, it won't hit the pen because the epoxy or epoxy scope has raised it up. Anyways, that's it, everybody. Um, you do not have to buy the Dremel. You do not have to buy the expensive Dremel flex shaft, but I do suggest it. I do suggest this tack life. Uh, David Grass from Texas bought this one for me. I do suggest this this uh, tack life. When just to test the waters to see if you like carving or not, change the nut on this. This is the cheap one. Change the nut. Get the Dremel call. Put that in there. Now, that's about that for that. So my favorite ones that aren't Dremel is the Apex Forge. The Wens and the Tack Life, all right? Um, the Wen and the Tack Life are my favorite, too. I also love the Black & Decker one. I forget the name of it, but uh, the Black & Decker one I used for years. Now, uh, my my favorite burrs I use are obviously Cutsoles. I'm not sponsored by Cutsole, but I am affiliate. So when you buy burrs from the link below that I got here, it will take you to the Cutsole site. Use the code CFUSION. You'll save yourself 5%. I make pennies, guys. But that's it. These are the burrs to go to. Once you get these type of burrs with the spikes on them, Sabretooth make good burrs too. And uh, Fordham, the Typhoons. That's what I started out with, the Fordhams, the Typhoon burrs. But um, these spiky burrs are awesome at hogging out wood. Um, they're, they're, they're not as – let's see if you, got a, if you guys can see good here. So you get some that are really spiky. This is my favorite burr here. It's all plugged up. But this is the Extreme Flame. Flame burr. Now here's one, a brand new one that I haven't used yet, so you can. It's not plugged up, but this is the taper burr. But taper burrs come like you get the shorter, shorter reverse cone one, or you get the long skinny one. So you can buy these burrs. The black ones are the most aggressive, like these ones here that are super spiky. But then you can buy the silver ones that are um, not so spiky. Then you can buy the gold ones, and each burr has uh, extreme, normal, and gold. So each burr has three different, an uh, aggressive, less aggressive, and then like um, gold like sandpaper. Then you can get diamond burrs. Then you can get um, aluminum cutting burrs like this. You know, these come, these are on Amazon. These come in packages. There's, um, I think I went over pretty good, everything pretty good here. You can get um, this, 
sanding mandrels that I use off uh, Amazon. You get like five of these, just uh, type in. I think these are my Amazon store, actually, if you want to go to my Amazon. I think you get like 10 for like eight bucks. But I put sandpaper on here, and this is how I sand. Turn your dremels down and just uh, sand away. You can put scotch braid on it too. So this one's got scotch braid. It's just they're just worn down. Oh, here's a better one with scotch braid on it. This is the good 3M scotch braid. You see it? It's separate pieces. I just cut it into little squares, put it on here, and start. The scotch braid sounds cottonwood bark super good. That's it, everybody. Hope you've learned something. You do not have to have the Dremel. A WEN, Tack Life, or Apex Forge, or something cheaper just to test the water so you don't spend a bunch of money. Because trust me, that's why I started this channel to try and help people save money. You get little metalworking burrs, kits like this on eBay or Amazon. These are little small ones for details and stuff like that. There's no end to it. It goes on and I've wasted so, so, so much money. Um, I hope this is able to help you out and save you some money. Car Infusion, don't shit your pants. It's the end of August. Halloween's just around the corner. It's going to be here tomorrow, it seems like. Um, long live the pumpkin king. This carve Rob made this for me one year when I carved 60 pumpkins. And um, so... I'll be on to probably one of my next videos should be I'm going to Vancouver Island for a couple of days to go mushroom pickings, to pick chanterelles, uh, maybe go beach combing. Um, so I'm going to come back, start carving pumpkins. Then I'm going to start carving the Christmas trees. Yep, cr Christmas is just around the corner too. It'll be here in no time. Um, hey, everybody, do you think Just Carve Rob needs to carve a Christmas tree king for me? I've been bugging him. Come on, just carve, Rob. You can do it. Uh, Jordy needs. Jordy already has the pumpkin king, but he also needs a Christmas tree king too.